you would speak up and speak out clearly in your interactions with others. And you would be admired, respected, and sought after by everyone who knew you. Recognition and responsibilities would flow to you because of people's belief in your ability to do whatever it took to get the job done. Positions of prestige and status would open up for you, and people would bring you opportunities and possibilities that you cannot now imagine. Dealing with difficulties. With greater self-confidence, you could deal more effectively with the inevitable problems and difficulties that arise in day-to-day -day life. You would think continually in terms of solutions and how you could turn any situation to your best advantage. You would laugh at adversities that would be dishearten most people and pluck success out of the jaws of failure. You would turn lemons into lemonade. You would feel invincible and unconquerable. With higher levels of self-confidence, you would be far more effective in dealing with difficult people and situations. You would be a far better negotiator and be able to ask for and get better prices, terms and conditions in everything you bought and sold. Feel terrific about yourself. With greater self-confidence, with an unshakable belief in yourself, nothing would be impossible for you. More than anything else, you would feel terrific about yourself. You would feel truly happy about every part of your life, knowing deep down inside that you have the ability to take whatever steps and make whatever changes are necessary to assure that your life is exactly the way you want it. You would experience a tremendous sense of control, which is the fundamental requirement for happiness, well-being, and maximum performance. You would feel like the master of your fate and the captain of your soul. With unlimited self-confidence, you would feel completely self-determined and in charge of your life. You would experience a feeling of strength and power and purpose and have a positive mental attitude toward yourself and everyone in your life and everything you do. With unshakable self-confidence, you would unquestionably be an exceptional human being. What if some great force could endow you with the power to achieve any goal that you could set for yourself? To put it another way, what if you were completely unafraid of anyone or anything and you felt completely free to act in any area in your own best interest? The fact is that if you developed the quality of unshakable self-confidence, your whole world would be different. Unlimited self-confidence. With greater confidence in yourself and your abilities, you would set bigger goals, make bigger plans, and commit yourself to achieving objectives that today you only dream about. You would take whatever steps were necessary to earn more money and enjoy a higher standard of living. You would set your sights on a bigger house, a better car, more beautiful clothes and nicer vacations. You would want all kinds of things for your family and for those close to you. With unshakable self-confidence, you would do what you really want to do and you refuse to conform to the wishes or opinions of anyone else. You would define your life in your own terms and live every day consistent with exactly what it is you want and not the wishes of other people. With greater self-confidence, you would be a different person in every part of your work life and career. You might decide to ask for a promotion or a raise or even change to another job or another company or even another industry. You would move immediately to do whatever it took to get onto the fast track in your career. If you're in sales, you would call on more people, make better and more forceful presentations, ask for more orders, and close more business. If you're in management, you would organize and reorganize your human and material resources to create a work environment that suited you perfectly, rather than making endless compromises in an attempt to please a variety of different people. With greater self-confidence, you would be bolder and more imaginative. You would be more creative and willing to experiment with new and different ideas and ways of doing things. You would be willing to consider unusual and risky alternatives and willing to commit yourself wholeheartedly to projects that are today sitting only on the back burner of your mind. More powerful, popular, and persuasive. If you had unlimited self-confidence, 
You would be more powerful, popular, and persuasive with other people. You would be more cheerful, likable, and welcome wherever you went. Hello, this is Brian Tracy, and welcome to the power of self-confidence. Let's begin with the introduction. Entering the No Fear Zone. According to Bruce Barton, he wrote, Nothing splendid has ever been achieved except by those who dared believe that something inside of them was superior to circumstance. Welcome to the No Fear Zone. In this audio program, you will learn how to develop confidence, courage, and unshakable determination in every area of your life. You will learn to approach the biggest challenges and opportunities of your life completely unafraid, convinced of your ability to accomplish anything you put your mind to. The good news is that you have extraordinary potential for success, achievement, and prosperity with more talent and natural ability than you could use in a hundred lifetimes. The only thing standing between you and the incredible life that is possible for you is fear of all kinds. And by the time you finish this book, your fears will be gone forever. For more than 25 years, I've studied successful men and women looking for the characteristics and qualities they have in common that have enabled them to achieve so much more than the average person. I've read thousands of books and articles and research studies on success, and I've come to the conclusion that the foundation quality of success in every walk of life is self-confidence. Every man or woman who has ever accomplished anything out of the ordinary has turned out to have greater self-confidence than the ordinary person. And when you develop yourself to the point where your belief in yourself is so strong that you know that you can accomplish almost anything you really want, your future will be unlimited. A great question. A woman who had listened to one of my programs wrote to me recently and told me that one line in that program had changed her whole outlook on life. It was simply a question. What one great thing would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail. When she began asking herself that question over and over, her entire view of what was truly possible for her expanded dramatically. She saw clearly what she really wanted to be and have and do, and she simultaneously realized that it was only fear and doubt in her own abilities that was holding her back. What would you do differently if you were absolutely guaranteed of success in any undertaking. So he broke it up and 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 then leased it up and his you know so he has a, his expenses but now he's got 30 people paying rent as opposed to just you know one big vacant building he turned it into a pretty cool workspace you know for everybody. But the what and then Kenny's in his third book you know the advanced guide to real estate his job is to get this up keep this stable then he goes back to the banker and says, look, we've got all these tenant monies going up, and so we now want $12,000. Yeah. Because he's improved income, kept expenses low, buildings more valuable. Yeah, the key there is the, the bank's always looking at your NOI to pay back their loan. So the, the more you can grow that, the more loan you can get. Mm -hmm. And so essentially the renters are paying your debt. Of course. Yeah, essentially. So if that building I was referring to goes to 50% vacant, now he's in trouble. Mm -hmm. But if he can keep it full, so now you're getting into management. But regardless of that, that's how you do it. You, there's opportunities like this everywhere. And I know that another thing that you always mention in all your books and the ABCs of real estate investing is that property management is very important. Poor property management equals poor profits, right? And so I wanted you to kind of explain the importance of the property sure. management. Well, essentially all property management is, is taking care of the property in every way. So taking care of the people that might be inside of this building, you know, for the various things that come up from day to day, collecting the rent and paying all the expenses. That's really all it is. And so the property manager's job is to make sure the place is clean and, and that things are getting rented and, and all those things. And so the owner of the building uh, would hire a company like that or they can do it themselves. And um, 
and basically um, keep the place full. So in our world, you know, we have a, a property management company that we have about 300 employees. All we do is focus on this, these, these two things. Now, how do we keep our expenses low and keep our, our income high? Because we're always trying to grow our NOI. So our NOI, you know, we have a budget for, let's say, 2017 or 2018 or 2019. The goal is to grow that NOI each year. And Kenny has done such things as the way he grew the income, he put washing machines, right, in, yeah. the, in the unit. In there are no washing machines. And so when he put washing machines in the building, this went up. Yeah, so uh, in my apartment houses, um, we would buy apartment houses that had washer and dryer hookups, but no machines. See, the beauty about real estate is you learn to use debt to get rich. If you're going to be rich, you have to learn to use debt. It's called other people's money. The six words that are basics of financial education, financial intelligence, income expense, asset liability, and the two other words are cash flow. So when you look at the average person, they have a job, money comes in here, they pay for their house, and the money goes to a bank through a mortgage. So it's not an asset because the cash is flying, flowing out, so it's a liability. So the definition of liability, does it take money from your pocket? And for an asset, does it put money in your pocket? So when I have a rental property here, it puts money in my pocket. So if I live in the house, it's a liability because even if I have no debt on it, I still have taxes, depreciation, repairs, and upkeep, insurance, and all this. When I rent a property, I've done a good job buying it and structuring it, every month it sends me money. So I started off when I was 25, I had a little one bedroom condo and it put 25 bucks in my pocket. It was a start. So this was good debt. You see, I, this, the debt also went out and paid, but it also put $25 in my pocket. So net, net, I was making money from my little house. So today my wife and I own 6,500 of them. And so the people would walk down to the laundromat or whatever and it was a bit of an inconvenience for the people and all that. So I said well let's just buy for $650 we can buy a washer and dryer set and stick them in all there and we did that. And so I probably bought uh, three or four thousand sets of washers and dryers um, for a lot of our properties. And so now all of a sudden we can charge seventy-five or hundred dollars more in rent. And this goes up. Yeah. This doesn't go up as much. It's a win-win because they have to go spend some money anyway to go do their laundry. Now they can do it here. And for me, if uh, I can pay back those washers and dryers in one year because it's only $650 for a set, and if I can get $75 more, then all of a sudden I've got $900 to almost $1,000 more in rent. So I'm actually, it's, a, it's what I call a, a one-year payback on. So what Kenny does, he borrows the money here yeah. to put washing machines in here. Again, the tenant pays it all off, and the washing machine stays there. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a brilliant idea because I know that both of you have created incentives for the renters. So for example, if they stayed for a year, you would do certain renovations like including the washing machine. And so every year there was another incentive which not only increased the property's value, but also the renters paying for it essentially. And the banker was happy. Yeah. yeah. What would you guys respond to the critics who say that real estate is a slow lane approach to getting rich? That's well, fine with me. I, I, I can't think of another. I mean, I think, I think it's really super simple. Wow, real estate is very slow and very dumb. You know, Every month we got cash flow. Yeah, you know, it's, I like that. I like, you know, we're not banking on something going up. We're, this is called creating value. We're not parking our money in something and hoping it goes up. This is very strategic. Perfect. So everybody's got their point of view. Most people want to get rich quick. That's why they never get rich. Yeah, this is not that. <laughs> yeah, this, this is financial education. This is smart. 
This is having your banker be your partner. Yeah, and these are long-term assets, by the way. These are, these are, this is like, this is a business. This is like managing a business. We would not sell these. So unlike the stock market or something, you know, we're not trying to time things. We're trying to generate cash flow here and then move to the next one. Okay. Perfect. So can I give you one last thing? Because those guys always upset me. So what Kenny does, he increases this, fixes this, and then when this goes up, he gives my money back. So I might give Kenny a million dollars for five years, let's say. He increases this, decreases this. The bank says, oh yeah, NOI is up. So he puts all this money in there. I get my million dollars back. I still own the property. I still have the cash flow going in. So all you guys want to get rich quick, it's called an infinite return, right? Yeah, and it's tax free. It's tax free. The reason it's tax free is because when, when we use debt to pay back debt, it's debt, so it's owed. So when Robert gets his money back, it's actually tax free. Yeah, let me say I lend Kenny, and this is pretty common numbers, I lend him one million. He fixes all this, the bank gives him three million, I get my million dollars back, right. and that is tax free, I get it back. Right. And I still own the building with Kenny. And every month, 6,500 houses put money in my pocket. My, my people who live in them love me and all this because they have a place to live. But all of this comes from debt. So we don't, oh, we have, they're 100% finance here. It's all debt. So this is good debt. And what makes it good debt is are the two most important words, cash flow. NOI means net operating income. So if you really think about it, um, it's just, income minus expenses that's all it is and so it's important to know where you are financially so a banker is going to look at your income after expenses so that's a great way to say it yeah it's really it's really quite simple so let's say i'll keep the numbers simple you have a thousand dollars income and you have five hundred dollars in expenses this is a prop yeah so you have a five hundred dollar noi or net operating income so why is that important? Well, the banker looks at that number because that's the number that they see to be able to pay back any debt you might want. Right, this is where this comes in, right? Correct, so, so they're gonna look here and they're gonna say, okay, this person has $500 in NOI, therefore we can give them a loan, say up to, say $350, $250 or something like that. So they're not gonna give you a loan for the whole amount because um, they don't want you, know, that, you to be that tight. So but what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at the NOI and say, how much can we loan you? So so when Kenny calls me and says, I have this property, it's in horrible condition, there's no income, there's expenses all over the place, you get excited, right? A lot of people get hung up here because they don't have a financial statement, any way to go to a banker, let's say. But sometimes a banker will look at the property itself. So they'll say, this has a bad NOI on it, why would we give you money? You know what I mean? And then so that's when the financial education comes in and you say, well, this is what I plan to do with it. Correct. What Kenny is saying, we've had, I'm keeping the numbers simple, he's had income of zero. <laughs> yeah. And this is a thousand. Yeah. So you'd have a negative NOI. And the banker goes, I tell can't. me why. I can't lend on that, right? Right. Because there's, there's, it's a higher risk of being able to be paid back. The NOI or the net operating income um, determines the value. So, um, you, what you back into it, a uh, another uh, vehicle called the capitalization rate or cap rate. So it's actually, well, we're getting a little technical, but typically the cap rate or capitalization rate uh, divided into the NOI determines the price. So that's generally how that works. But in the case that we were talking about, the, the value of the building with no tenant in it is way low. Is way low, and there's really no income. So uh, it's basically whatever you, you know the structure is. So I've seen lots of situations where a vacant building, somebody might have spent five, ten million dollars on a building that's completely vacant.
you know, vacant warehouses, vacant whatevers, right? Sometimes you see them get converted into clubs or whatever. Well, there's value there. Somebody spent a lot of money on it. Well, one time, somebody owns it too. It could be a bank, it could be whatever. So taking that and creating value, sticking a restaurant in it, a gym in it, a, a club in it, it doesn't really matter who's in it. Well, it does because you want them to pay you, but, but you know, now you're creating the income and then that, that's how you create value. So in that example, let's say, let's say you buy a building for a million bucks you know, on, a, on a block. Um, with a tenant in it, it could be worth three, four, five million. So what we, if it's if it's a tenant in it, the value is up. Yeah, right. Because now then then you what you do is you put all that together, and then you can actually sell it. Got it. And so even if the NOI is negative, if you create a plan that creates value for the property and shows the increase that you're going to give the property's value, the bank will give you the loan. Oftentimes, yeah, and not there, always. Not yeah, always. not always, but there are there are ways to do it. So in that particular case, you might get a loan from somebody like Robert and say, "Hey, you know, I need a million bucks, and this is my plan." And then once you get a tenant in it, then you go back to the bank and you say, "Hey, give me a loan," and uh, and then they give you a loan and you pay Robert back. So the thing that Kenny is always looking for is after we stabilize the building, he'll tell me, he "says Look." In five years, I'm going to get this from 1,000 to 10,000. Yeah. I go okay, so that I, I know I'm in it for five years with them as an investor. And on top of that, we're going to re reduce the expenses back to 500. The NOI goes up, the value goes up, the debt goes up to let's say 10,000. So I have a friend, for example, he actually bought a building uh, in um, a town up in Idaho where I have a vacation house for about a million bucks. And it was sitting, it was an old Elks building, a beautiful building downtown, but it had been vacant for a long time. He bought it and he put like 30 offices in there, small offices, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 feet each and grew the re the revenue, right? So everybody pays. So the, so the income went up. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. In comparison with others. With low self-confidence, many people today work extremely hard on the outside to achieve success. But when they do, deep down inside, they feel like imposters. This so-called fear of success is really a feeling of unworthiness that we can't seem to get rid of no matter how much we achieve. Many successful men and women are repeating the line to the song, Is This All There Is?, when looking around them at their homes and cars. You want to be happy. What people want more than anything else is just to feel really good about themselves. We want to be happy and positive and have a sense of well-being. Above all, what we really want is peace of mind. And you can only enjoy peace of mind when you feel confident in your ability to deal effectively with the requirements of life, with your family, your friends, your work, your customers, your social activities, and all the other things that you are involved in. The law of cause and effect tells us that if we want to enjoy the effect of high self-confidence, we need only engage in the causes of high self-confidence. If we can find out what it is that other highly self-confident men and women think and say and do, and then do the same, we will eventually get the same results. We will eventually feel the same way. We will eventually become unstoppable. Mental Marathon Training It's often hard for people to believe that mental qualities can be developed, just as physical qualities can be developed. If this were a program on how to run a physical marathon, and I was offering to train you day by day over the next six months to run a marathon, you would come to realize that even a non-runner can go from being physically unfit to running a marathon of 26.4 miles in six months of discipline training. Today, there are even men and women in their 50s and 60s who are running marathons for the first time with this kind of training. What this program will do for you is to put you through a mental marathon. This marathon will not be as arduous or painful physically as a physical marathon, 
but it will still require a tremendous amount of work. And the amount of work that you put in will exactly determine the results that you get out. If you follow these proven and practical principles, drawn from the lives and behaviors of the most successful men and women alive today, and all of which are scientifically validated by extensive research and experience, you can develop the self-confidence that you desire so that you can achieve anything you really want. So let's begin. Chapter 1 The Foundation of Self-Confidence William Shakespeare said, There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Your thoughts and feelings about yourself and what you can do or not do are the sum total result of a lifetime of experience and conditioning and usually have little relationship to what is truly possible for you. The law of cause and effect can imprison us in a cell of our own making or it can liberate us by giving us complete freedom depending upon how we use it. The law itself, like the law of gravity, is neutral. This law of cause and effect, which is both a physical and mental law, says that for every effect in our lives, there is a specific cause or causes. If there's an effect in our life that we want more of, like more money or greater success, we can trace it back to the cause and by repeating the cause, we can enjoy more of the effects. If we're in sales or business and we have successes, we can trace those successes back to the specific things that we did to achieve them and by repeating those causes we can enjoy the same effects again. This law also says that if there's an effect in our lives that we don't want, whether it be overweight or insufficient funds or problems with people or negative business conditions, we can trace that effect back to the causes and by removing or changing the causes we can achieve different effects or results. This law of cause and effect is so simple and obvious that no one seriously questions it. We live in a world and in a universe governed by law, not by chance. Everything happens for a reason. Neither success nor failure is an accident. They have specific causes and when we repeat the causes we get the same effects no matter who we are. This is just the way the world works. The Roots of Low Self-Confidence The world is full of people who are not happy with their results and yet they continue to do the same things, think the same thoughts, say the same things and take the same actions every day and they're amazed that they continue to get the same negative effects. Einstein's definition of insanity was continuing to do the same things and expecting to get different results. However, this is simply not possible. The law of cause and effect applies with equal validity to our levels of self-confidence. All around us and throughout human history, there are and have been men and women with exceptionally high levels of self-confidence who have gone on to achieve extraordinary things. In studying the lives and stories of these people, we find that some of them started out with high levels of self-confidence which they learned from their parents in early childhood. But most of them started off the same way we all start off, with deep down feelings of inferiority and inadequacy. Because of destructive criticism, lack of love and other mistakes that parents make with us in early childhood, we grow up with diminished feelings of self-esteem, low self-confidence, and sometimes a feeling that I'm not good enough. In personal development there is a principle or a law of becoming that simply says that each person is in a continual process of becoming or evolving and growing in the direction of his or her dominant thoughts. Your body is also in a state of becoming. At a normal rate of cell death and replenishment you have a brand new body every seven years. But whereas your physical evolution in becoming is affected by the food that you put into your body, your mental evolution and becoming is largely determined by the thoughts that you put into your mind. You become what you think about. The law of concentration says that 
Anything you dwell upon grows in your reality. Anything that you think about long enough and hard enough eventually becomes a part of your mental processes, exerting its influence and power on your attitude and your behavior. If you constantly think thoughts of boldness and courage and self-assertion, you become progressively bolder and more courageous and more self-assertive. The more you dwell on the person you would like to be with the qualities that you would like to have, the more you implant those deep into your subconscious mind where they become part of your ongoing evolution. What you habitually think about eventually becomes a part of your character and your personality.